Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me for our yield analysis. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm the FXCM Senior Market Specialist. And again, just want to highlight my email address, rshaw at fxcm.com. And certainly send me those emails if you'd like to correspond, and I will certainly uh, get back to you. Today being Wednesday, the 26th of June. And uh, this is an, um, this is the um, rescheduled yield analysis because we had the uh, technical difficulties on Monday. Just going to bring up our disclaimers. Uh, once we've got the disclaimers on screen for a few seconds, um, we'll move on to the actual presentation. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, for this presentation, we're going to be uh, doing the um, analysis on tradingview.com. And um, the chart that I have um, over here, we, we're going to be using the 10 year um, yields as opposed to the two year yields. You can see the, they're slightly different. Uh, the 10-year chart, the 10-year yields is the top chart, the two-year yields are the lower chart. I tend to find that the uh, two-year is very, very sensitive to central bank uh, policy. But when we're looking at actual flows in terms of investment flows, uh, I think the 10-year bond gives us um, a very good um, proxy. So I'm going to just delete the bottom chart. We'll do the... Uh, We'll be doing our work off of uh, the, uh, the tenure, and um, what we have here is um, let me just change this to orange. I beg your pardon, not red. Okay, so what we got here is our um, tenure bond yield, and of course we've got uh, a trend following. Um, system here using two EMAs. We can also use the Bollinger Bands, um, but what we just need to see is which way the yield is moving. Is it moving up or is it moving down? So here you can see the yield is moving down. And uh, generally um, what that uh, is indicating is um, uh, money is going into um, the tenure bonds um, and they inversely relate to the yield so as money goes into the the bond the yield comes down uh, but we still need to pay attention to the yield okay because at the end of the day uh, yield attracts capital yield attracts capital and um when we were before we were um, experienced those technical difficulties on Monday, uh, the analogy was was a, was as follows. So you can see here in this ten-year yield, we've got a rate of about two percent. Okay, the yield is two percent. So um, a Japanese fund manager sitting in his office in Tokyo, and um, that. Uh, fund manager has to provide a, a, a return for the funds that are invested uh, with him or her. And uh, they look, he or she looks around and decides which, which region or which country um, has a yield uh, with a, uh, a fairly good risk profile that they can allocate funds to and um, then uh, we'll start moving funds in that direction. Take a look. If we had to take, uh, bring up the Japanese tenure, incidentally, JP tenure, you can see that it is at a rate of minus 0.148, so at minus 0.15 roughly. So there is zero return on a on a gov on a Japanese tenure. Okay, so that's just uh, an indication of how the um, yield seeker starts looking for better rates and a 2% um, would certainly be um, a lucrative return in terms of an environment where uh, the local 
the local interest rate is um, effectively negative. Okay, so that's the first thing that we've got to understand. That yield attracts capital. Now, if yield attracts capital, there's fundamental mechanisms that have to take place uh, in order for the investment investment to be made. So again, looking at the fund manager in Tokyo, that person will have to sell Japanese yen, in, in effect creating a supply of Japanese yen, and start buying up US dollars, effectively creating a demand for US dollars. And um, the supply will, uh, in the yen, will move the yen price down. The demand for the US dollars will move the uh, price of the greenback up. And that is effectively what we're looking for in terms of yield analysis. Um, see if we can find um, the spread, look in the direction that the spread is going, and see in effect what it's actually doing to the, uh, the currency pair that we are interested in. It's also worth noting that uh, this type of analysis works uh, quite well for the industrialized economies okay so um, what I said earlier is that the uh, Japanese fund manager is looking for a relatively good yield um, in a relatively uh, risk uh, free environment when I, when I say risk free environment if we start looking at emerging markets or um, frontier markets so emerging markets is, is, is more correct is the, fa the fact of the matter is there's other risks that the fund manager has to assess uh, uh, be it um, uh, growth risks, uh, economic policies, um, stability, uh, there's just a whole lot more variables that are not particularly easy to analyze. Uh, so the, uh, the yield analysis will work um, less well when you start looking at the, um, at the exotic currencies. Now, Let's take a look at um, a few examples and see if we can um, start seeing the patterns. But before we move on to that, let's just uh, touch base. Are there any questions at the moment? Please uh, type those through. Okay, right, looks like we on track. Um, Let's just take a look at um, the um, Australian 10-year. Okay, let's just take a look at that. So we can see it's roughly 2% for the US 10-year. Uh, the Aussie 10-year is, okay. You can see it's at a lower rate, 1.29%. 1.29%, and it's a very, very uh, strong movement down in the Australian 10-year. Okay, but having said that, okay, we don't want to look at it in a in a vacuum. We need a comparison between the two um, the two rates, and we need to get some sort of trend in terms of the uh, spread between the two rates, because the, the funds will move in terms of a relative basis as a, a continual rebalancing, con continuous reallocation of funds as the spreads change. So this is what I'm referring to. I'm gonna just go and take the Aussie minus the US 10 year. Now that's a little bit different to what I did on Monday. On Monday, I did the US 10 year minus the Aussie. Um, and uh, this is the better way to do it. Uh, Rob sent me an email and just said, um, does this make sense? Uh, putting the Aussie first. And it does because in terms of the uh, currency pair we're going to co be comparing this to, we're going to be looking at the Aussie US dollar. So the Aussie is the base currency. It's the first currency in the pair. So we'll put the, uh, the, the bond of the base currency first and then the, um, the bond of the counter currency or the quote second. And it's a fairly good way of looking. I think it's, it's a, a much clearer way of doing this type of analysis. So let's uh, go out five years and see what we can see with, uh, with this particular um, spread. 
I think the most apparent, the most apparent right away that catches my eye is this big decline uh, since um, got this uh, weird lock here. Uh, what is that? Um, yeah, it's okay. Uh, we've got this weird. Happy We've got this uh, decline coming from about October down here, and that would be October 2017. Now let's bring up underneath on the bottom chart uh, the Aussie um, the Aussie US dollar. So you just press compare here, and let's put it in AUD USD. Okay, and then. Let's just tidy it up by putting in some um, candlesticks. And I'll just make everything a little bit more consistent. And we can start doing our yield analysis. Okay. So let's start at the right, because uh, this is where we are right now. But take a look at this uh, decline in the yield um, moving all the way down. And it's just very, very interesting to see from about this point onwards, the Australian US dollar follows the, um, the decline in the, in the spread. In other words, an Australian fund manager sees that the Australian yield is uh, declining relative to the US um, tenure and uh, would make a tactical decision um, to start allocating more and more funds to the US um, the US side of uh, the global economy uh, the, the worse the spread gets uh, for the for the Australian uh, tenure bond so it works very much on a relative basis. Let's just go now to the uh, the left part. Let's see. Okay, we, we're starting here. Now we've got, um, let's just see here, a little bit of a decline there, which matches up to the decline here. Okay. We've got a just trying to catch we've got a little bit of a bounce there okay there we go and we have the corresponding bounce here we get a move down there okay then it becomes sorry it's there we go. We get a little bit of a move uh, down there and gets a little bit uh, tricky here. Sideways move, okay. Get the bounce here. And then here is this capitulation. So the capitulation follows here. So the, the relationship reasserts. So we've got a little bit of an anomaly here. Okay. A little bit of an anomaly there. We've got a I think actually let's do it as such. A move there and a move here. Okay. Maintains the relationship. Let's bounce here. Slight bounce here. Okay. Movement there movement there comes down here comes down here okay a little bit of a movement up there a little bit of a movement up there okay so you can see the uh, the relationships incredibly tight here move down there okay moves down here moves up down there so a little bit of a break over here so let's just put in a square box a little rectangle there and then and this takes us up to there takes us up to there and um, 
this is the actual move here with a little bit of a divergence. Let's just see, the divergence is just over there. But by and large, by and large, the, uh, the money flow uh, follows the spreads pretty accurately, pretty accurately. Now, before I move forward, let's have some comments just on that chart. Uh, what do you think about the, uh, the positive relationship there? Okay, nothing coming through. So uh, I'm taking it that uh, everything uh, is, is yeah, Rob, it's, it's pretty clear. Now, let's move to the right side of the chart. The right side of a chart is actually the most important part because that is, uh, that is where we are trading now. It becomes a little tricky on the, on, on the right side of the part, particularly at this point in time because at this point in time, We've got the uh, U.S. Uh, looking to cut rates further, which is uh, most likely going to uh, filter through to the U.S. tenures. But if we just keep watching this chart, we'll be okay because the Australian um, Reserve Bank of Australia is also dovish at the moment. So we want to watch the spread very, very carefully, not get trapped by the um, the rhetoric um, that is in the the media is with the regards to the Fed being very dov dovish. Yes, it is, of course, very dovish. I'm not arguing that. But we've got to always look at it relative to the other central banks. So we know that the uh, Fed has turned dovish, and we know that the um, Aussie bank is dovish. If I bring up my marker scope, um, actually, let's just bring that up. Okay. We can see that the um, Aussie is uh, bouncing at the moment as such. I'm just looking at the, at the daily chart here. So the Australian US dollar is moving up. Okay. That's counter to what's happening on the um, Let's counter what's happening on the spread. So now it may be worthwhile adopting some sort of strategy to say, okay, I'm going to wait to see if uh, this uh, moves back into zone three. When it moves back into zone three, well, now it is recalibrating with the spread and uh, potentially uh, start positioning ourselves for a, um, a trend. Um, as the as the as the capital flow starts um, starts calibrating or, or, or reallocating, We're trying to put everything together. We're trying to put everything together. Remember, we've got a tag here. Okay, here is a potential M. Potential. It's not finished yet. Okay, there's certainly no uh, bearish. There's no bearish divergence because the momentum is is down the momentum is down so uh, let's just keep an eye on the on the actual price so if it moves from zone one back into zone two back into zone three then it's potentially recalibrating with the spread okay if the spread starts moving north eastwards we can start now incorporating that into our technical analysis. In other words, what I'm proposing is that we're looking at the spreads, which is the pinnacle of fundamental analysis, um, and start uh, making a, an effort to see that our technical signals are on the same side as the fundamental setup. Does that make sense? Okay, so Rob's got a, uh, a note here. I'm just reading it. He's been looking at using a Bollinger Band uh, 50 period with the two standard deviations and a Bollinger Band uh, 20 uh, um, period, two standard deviations, where the lower bands are very close. You have a clear downtrend which coincides with your green lines, but not the blue boxes. Okay. 
Okay, let's just see if I can line that up, Rob. Uh, so you're looking at the Bollinger Bands. Um, are you looking at that on this uh, on the chart of the spread or of of the uh, forex pair? I've got them on the spread. Okay, so I'm just going to put in some Bollinger's here, guys. Bear with me. Let's see if it makes things clearer. Okay, so there's a 50, and we'll keep that at a 2. Let's just make this uh, red. Alrighty, so um, what uh, what uh, Rob's doing here is he's uh, using the, let me just see if I've got this clear. I've been looking at using a Bollinger 52 and a Bollinger 22. Okay, so you're still using zone analysis. You've just adjusted the, 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 um, the measurements. Okay, let's just bring up the second one. Let me see this. Uh, can take the basis out there. Basis out there. Let me just see. Is that is that what you're looking at? The, yes, the theory in, is in a trend, the lower bands are close and the upper bands are apart. The theory is in a trend, the lower bands are close and the upper bands are apart. Okay, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, let's just slow it down here and just take a look at what uh, Rob's doing. And um, I'll just uh, uh, explain it the way I... Uh, I understand it. He is using two bands. Can you see there's a big sort of gap over here? So when there's a gap between the upper and the upper red and the upper blue, he's reading that as a downtrend. At the same time, the two bands underneath are very close uh, together. Okay, so that's the way he's looking at the at the at the um, and th that would work. The idea is just choose trend following indicators that um, are easy for you, okay? In a consolidation, the bands are equidistance. Okay. I actually wouldn't, wouldn't mind trying that on uh, an actual uh, Forex pair, but let's just keep the, um, the um, let's keep the EMAs for now, or we can even put one EMA. Let's make it a 50. Um, and just make sure that the spread is lining up in the same direction as the as the currency pair and vice versa. So let's just make that 50. I make this a black thick line. Okay, so here is the movement down. Mm. No, sorry guys, I, I don't want to confuse the issue here. Let's keep it very tight, okay? The, the, way, the way these zig, zig and zags are, are moving, are they very close to one, to one another? And yes, the overall trend certainly does have a, um, have a bearing, but I want to just make it clear that the, even though the spread has a small bounce here, it still has an effect on the currency. Even though it has a small movement there, still has an effect on the currency. A small bounce here still has an effect on the currency. So let's just keep it very, very tight for, 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 for this webinar. Um, and once we get used to this concept, we can start seeing if we can introduce indicators. Um, does that make, make sense with you guys? I just want to make sure that we are uh, keeping in line with the absolute fundamentals.
Okay, I just want to make sure is everybody on the same page. I don't, hope I haven't lost any uh, lost anyone just yet. Now let's take a look at a, another another pair. Let's take a look at the uh, the euro. Okay, so in the in the bottom, uh, I'm going to change this to euro US dollar. And now the question that I'm going to pose is the question I'm going to pose is when we're looking at the spread, which country's yield comes first? Which country's yield comes first? Okay. Yes, exactly. Excellent. So just it says the German yield. So the German uh, Bund, the 10-year German bond is the proxy for the uh, euro. And we're going to put DE 10 Y minus US 10 Y. And let's just see if we can get the pairs lining up. Okay. Let's go five year. No. Okay. Right. Well, let's start right over here. On an absolute basis, we're heading down there. And we're heading down there. Okay, we get a bounce here. We're getting a bounce here. Okay, we're getting a dip there. We're getting our dip here. Okay, now we get a little bit, a little bit confused. There is a bounce here, and that does take us. It actually carries up quite a bit. But there's a little bit of a little bit of a ambiguity here. Nevertheless, we move down here. We move down there. There is a big acceleration downwards. There's a big acceleration downwards. We get a nice movement up here. We get a movement up here. Okay. Let's uh, now a little bit. This is quite a big anomaly here okay we'll talk about that in a moment there is a big movement down there we have an up move here okay and then from there it moves down and we have an anomaly actually over here uh big yours so this is a little bit trickier for the most part for the most part the spread between the German Bund and the US tenure is holding up terrifically. Okay, it's holding up terrifically, except there is a bit of an anomaly here. So let's change that color. So we are talking the same language. Uh, let's make that red. Uh, come on there and red. There we go. Okay, so right at this red, rectangle the market was uh, was um, actually pulling down the Deutsche uh, the, the German Bund was contracting uh, quite consistently against the US tenure but at this stage the US tenure uh, the U, the the euro to the US was increasing and that was a bit of a strange time in the market that was when Janet Yellen was in power. Uh, power is not the right word. When Janet Yellen was the chair of the Federal Reserve, and she was very, very um, dovish. She was continuously talking about um, the fact that uh, inflation uh, wasn't coming through the system. And she was talking the, uh, the US dollar down, in effect. Even though the market wasn't buying it in terms of the bond market, the bond market carry on, carry on moving down. Uh, so that's this um, that's the strange anomaly here. But what's our takeaway there? What's the takeaway there? The takeaway is that the uh, the euro US dollar effectively came back and was uh, and uh, came back and effectively ended up following the spread regardless. It effectively came back and started following the spread regardless, which brings us to this uh, anomaly here. 
this anomaly here, this is the uh, blue rectangle. The blue rectangle is showing us that the uh, yield is actually appreciating in favor of the uh, German Bund. I'm just taking a look at gesture. I'm going to come back to that. It's a very good, um, it's a very good uh, point. This anomaly, okay, why do I call it an anomaly? Because the uh, the spread is actually moving in the uh, favor of the German Bund now. We've still seen a weakness in the euro US dollar, but I want to just um, bring up the last anomaly we saw, which was this red rectangle, where the uh, euro us dollar effectively comes back and reasserts it reattaches into the direction of the spread so if the euro us dollar is now moving in that direction we must be quite weary to see if uh, there were if there's the euro us dollar starts moving in uh, in the direction of the spread as well Okay, so the fact that we can see the spread is moving in favor of the uh, the German Bund at the moment gives us a little bit of a um, an idea of which way funds potentially may start moving. Okay, so let's just keep an eye on that. The question is why hasn't funds started following the why hasn't funds started following the German Bund yet? Okay, why hasn't it? Okay, any ideas there? Okay, just just asking, is this the basis for the carry trade? That is exactly what we're doing. This is the carry trade gesture. This is exactly what the carry trade is. You are effectively following uh, the, the interest rate. So why I think funds haven't flowed into the euro area is because let's take a look at the German Bund by itself. Okay. It's because there's no real return. There's no real return. Uh, just at saying Brexit. Brexit could certainly be a factor, but I am thinking it's more than negative interest rates. The, the negative interest rates are actually, it's, it's, it's a strange economic f phenomenon. When I was at uh, uh, university, we hardly touched on negative interest rates. It's not part of normal economic um, science or economic um, philosophy. The fact that we got these, um, these um, negative interest rates on the German Bund is um, almost, in my opinion, in, almost in my opinion, a symptom of, of a dysfunctional, uh, um, a dysfunctional economic system. It doesn't really make sense that uh, you're investing in a government bond um, and you're not earning interest. In effect, you should be paying interest to be in, uh, holding German bonds. That's why, if we go back to the spread over here. We've got this anomaly here. Does that make sense to you guys? The negative interest rates have upset the relationship to a large degree, not to a little degree, to a large degree. So now we've got to watch to see if these German uh, Bund yields become positive again um, and see um, if that starts prompting investment over to the euro area. I'm going to just stop there because it's, we're dealing with heavy, heavy stuff. Is everybody following me at the moment? Okay. Now, the question I'm going to ask, this is the question I'm going to pose. What are the chances? What are the chances of the German Bund going positive? What, in your view, what are the chances? In my opinion, in my opinion, the chances, exactly. So Rob says the chances are slim until the economy picks up. 
Yeah, that, that's my uh, understanding as well. The European Central Bank is still very, very dovish, okay? They're very, very dovish. they most likely going to still be cutting rates um, this year. And I believe, who was it? I think it was... Was it more, wasn't Morgan Stanley? It slips in my mind, but one of the uh, big uh, banks has them uh, cutting twice this year, which uh, means that um, the flow and effects into longer term yields uh, keep the German Bund um, negative. So we've got a little bit of a, uh, of, of a dysfunctional spread there. Okay, let's just keep an eye on it. I want to be talking about this a little bit more and more in our webinars. And uh, the, the fact is that um, if we now see the yield start moving down like that, okay, then potentially uh, the euro carries on moving down downwards against the US dollar. And I don't think that is... Uh, I don't think that is a stretch. So that's really what I, I, I want to see if this uh, reasserts itself. If this uh, spread, this negative, uh, this uh, downward trend in the spread reasserts itself. That's what I'm uh, most interested in. Uh, let's just stop there. I want to show you, is every, everybody with me? I, I, I hope I haven't confused anyone. Uh, I, we, we can do as many of these webinars as, as possible. I just want to make sure that we're starting to get into the, to the, um, into the theory. Let's now, let's try and blend this. Let's try and blend this with the, with the um, Bollinger theory that we did yesterday. So I'm just going to add a Bollinger band. Let's just clean up this chart over here. Let's just clean up this chart over here. Okay, let's now add in a Bollinger. And just the standard settings, just the standard settings, Bollinger bands. Okay. Right. Let's just make this red. Let's just make this red a little thicker red and a little thicker okay and i want to add that percent b okay that percent b indicator so we're just going to go back to our indicators just put in percent b let's make this Uh, I think we can get rid of that. Okay, so what is the what is the one way that we may get a movement down here? Well, what I'm looking for now, I'll carry on watching the percent B, but if we get some sort of movement here, let's just say I'm going to make this black, okay, and then a movement down, I beg girls, then a then a move. movement down like that so there's a so if i can get the percent b to kind of move in that type of a direction on our spread analysis we start seeing it on our spread analysis then potentially we might see the um the german bund uh, start declining versus the us 10 year again so that's just one way that we can start using the information that we're picking up together. We can start applying it and see if we get the um, the spreads to, to reassert some sort of normality. The negative rates are really, really, um, a, 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 to me, a symptom of a dysfunctional uh, system. Let's just go and take a look at a few other uh, yields. I want to take a look now at the US dollar uh, loony pairing, US dollar loony pairing, and see what that uh, comes up with. Just before I do that, any questions so far? I um, 
just changing this to our uh, US dollar Canadian, US dollar Canadian. Okay, we we'll just change that pair in, and you can see. Let's just clear this up. Now you can see that the base currency in this pairing is the US dollar. So we're going to go here US 10 year minus CA 10 year. And that's going to give us the relative, uh, the relevant spread. Okay. At this stage, I'm going to just lose the Bollinger's. Okay. Up. Up. Down, down, okay, up, up, down. Can you see how closely correlated down? Okay, we've actually got a very elongated move. I'm going to shift it all the way up here on an absolute basis. And now take a look what's happening. We've got this capitulation in the spread. So there might be, there might be some movement this way. Okay, there might be some movement this way. What we're gonna do is, you don't blindly just short US uh, Canadian. We're trying to line up the fundamentals with the technicals. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to line up the fundamentals with the technicals. If we can get the price action on the right side of the fundamentals, I believe we've done ourselves a tremendous service Okay, let's just take a look at the uh, system that we're using and see how it is lining up at the moment. We'll bring up US dollar loony. Okay, let's just move it. You can see we are in zone three and we've just started moving down. Okay. These are big elongated moves down. And the really nice thing, if we can catch these things, if we can catch these, the technicals are on the same side as the fundamentals. The if we can get the technicals on the same side of the fundamentals, we should be more confident of our positions. Having said that, we still use a stop loss. We still use money management. I've got a comment here from Nuno. Let me just read it. For this, for this currency, the spread movement looks fine because they tell the full story. This is not true for the Euros, US dollar just by looking at the Bund and the US tenure. I, I would agree. Um, Nuno, my, my reading of that is that the, 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 the uh, negative yield has uh, made it very difficult um, for fund managers to shift funds into the, uh, the euro area. And I think that's what um, is, is blocking the relationship at the moment. Would you agree with that? Because if we went back to the original um, series, the original euro spread, uh, where is it? Um, here we go. If we went back to the original analysis that we did, I'm just bringing it up, won't be a moment, Euro, US dollar. The relationship was actually uh, really, really consistent. The relationship with the spreads were really, really uh, good. Uh, let's make this green. So here you could see it moved down. Then we had the steep move here. Then we had this nice move here. We had this nice move here. And this is rounds about where we started having a little bit of difficulty right here. That was Yellen uh, talking down the US dollar. But then what happens is the uh, single currency and the greenback reassert. And this is the anomaly here. And uh, it's very, very uh, much, in, in my opinion, a result of that uh, negative rate. Um, 
Okay, so what Nuno is saying, in practice, one should use a composite tenure bond for the for the EU zone. The uh, that that may be true. That may be true. Uh, the b two biggest economies in the EU. Um, the two biggest is uh, is Germany and France. Okay, so this is quite interesting. Let's just take a look at the spread between the uh, German Bund and the French tenure. Okay, this is very interesting. Let's bring that up. It's basically sideways. Basically sideways. So the, the whilst a composite, while a composite would, would most likely be better, the German Bund does uh, serve as a very good proxy. The other, the the Italian, uh, the Italian uh, uh, bonds, the BTPs at the moment, BTP, um, that in itself has a completely uh, different relationship with the German Bund, but that is because of the internal fiscal um, um, issues between the EU and and Italy. The first blue box is where the German Bund last went negative. Very interesting, Rob. Very, very interesting. Okay, that's uh, that's great insight. Okay, um, is everybody with me? It, please, if there's anything uh, you want to add, uh, type that in. I'm certainly will uh, let the group know. So, uh, Nuno, do you do you agree with what I what I say, or you? Um, I agree that the composite it would be better, but the, the the German Bund is a is a fairly good um, proxy. Okay, let's do one more one more together. This is going to be a um, a cross. We, let's do the Aussie versus the CAD. See what's happening with the Aussie versus the CAD, okay? So what I would do here is uh, AU tenure minus CA tenure. And let's see if we can pick up the relationships. Right at the beginning, if we go to the right hand side over here, you can see that uh, this seems to be following. Okay, uh, this part here is with this part. This part, there's a little bit of a bounce here. There is a movement up here and a movement up here. Okay, this goes there, this goes there. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. This goes there, this goes there. Got a movement there. This is quite an elongated movement. Okay. On an absolute level, it goes, on an absolute level, we are getting the same direction, but you can see that there is a little bit of wave discrepancies here. Okay. Let's just try and... Uh, so we've got a movement up here. Perhaps a little bit of a break in the relationship there. Let me go to the left-hand side. Down there. Down there. Down there. Down there. Okay. Bit of a bounce there. Bit of a bounce there. Bounce there. Bounce there, movement down there, movement down there. There's a bounce here, and another bounce here. Strong, strong movement down here, strong movement down here. Bounce there, bounce there, movement down there, movement down there. Here's this bounce, 
he has this bounce and that's the, that, that's the movement. So there is, uh, for the most part, a very tight fit, uh, one anomaly right over here. So the takeaways is, is that the, uh, the, there could be breaks from the relationship, but by and large, by and large, the idea that yield attracts capital uh, seems to be um, a, uh, a, decent, a, a, a decent rule that, that holds most of the time. Um, any any comments there? Okay, so what I'd like to do, we're going to start now putting together all the analysis. We're going to start putting together yield analysis. We're going to start putting together Bollinger analysis. Um, and we're going to see if our actual uh, Heiken Ashi methodology starts uh, matching up with us. And I think that uh, once we get the technicals lining up with the fundamentals, uh, we've got a really, really strong system indeed. Any comments on that statement? Now, of course, the um, British guilt. So let's just put in the um, British guilt minus the US tenure. This would be an interesting one to look at. The extra risk here, of course, would be uh, Brexit. And you can see the Brexit, let's see if the Brexit sort of premium or discount has been built in. Okay, so there's a, so Brexit happens round about here. Okay, this is, this is Brexit, this is the vote here. Okay, that's Brexit there. So up until then, we've got a pretty close, okay, so a little bit sideways, um, okay. So, and then here is the movement down, movement down, that's the Brexit vote there, move up, move up, move down, move down, I'm going to just take that across there, take that across there, a little bit of a anomaly here, you can see that the spread moves down, but the uh, cable pairing actually starts moving up, only starts moving down from about there. And we've got a little bit of an anomaly here. So the, it's moving up, but we apps, we flat or kind of more because of the Brexit anomaly that is. So especially the closer we get to the deadline for Brexit, the more um, uh, the, uh, p the pound US dollar um, deviates from the, uh, the spread. Okay, any comments about that? Okay. Um, this is uh, really what I wanted to introduce. Uh, just before we sign off, <clears throat> can uh, just get an idea. Is there anybody that hasn't followed me? Just put in an N. If anybody hasn't followed me, put in an N. Okay, so there's no Ns coming through, which uh, pleases me no end. <laughs> Do you guys find this useful? If you find it useful, can you just type in a Y, please? Okay, excellent. Okay, fantastic. And um, are there any, uh, should we do more webinars on this? Any more uh, webinars? Um, I want to be very much, okay, great. 
Okay, excellent. So I'll schedule more. Uh, we'll chat about it as we uh, carry on with our snapshots. Um, but I think this was a really good start. Um, I think that uh, we're building together a very, very good way of looking at the markets, guys. I want to uh, thank you very much for your time. Any uh, questions, I want to just um, reiterate, you can email me, okay, rshore at fxcm.com. And um, I will certainly, um, certainly get uh, back to you as soon as I can. Just want to remind you guys before we log off, um, in fact, it's already happened, I would imagine, the core uh, durable goods, yeah, core durable goods is out. Let's just see what the number is there. That's how the uh, US is investing. And it's a very interesting number that the core durable goods, so I actually wanted to show you this the um, in the first webinar. So before you guys sign off, let me just show you what we have here. I wanted to show you the Forex factory. The core durable goods, um, is, which is a sign of investment, has narrowed quite considerably. If we go back to 213, you can see how big the variations are, and it's very, very uh, narrow in, um, in terms of distribution now. But uh, we up, uh, we beat forecast at 0.3% versus 0.1. So um, again, that's a good sign for the US, okay? which again, I want to keep an eye on that uh, Deutsche US spread, okay, and see if it returns to some sort of normalcy. Um, having said that, guys, uh, let's leave it there. Uh, please join me again, 4 p.m. if you are in the UK, 5 p.m. In, if you're in ZA, and we'll speak a little bit later in the, in the day. Thanks very much for joining me, guys.